Hi everyone, so my name is Anita Ladani. Uh, I'm a licensed clinical social worker and an energy practitioner. And in my private practice, I use different energy modalities. In addition to talk therapy, I utilize hypnotherapy, theta healing, uh, neurolinguistic programming, and uh, Reiki, and, and basically overall energy healing. Um, I'm um, a happily divorced single mother of two, uh, and uh, I have two beautiful souls that are my boys. They're 16 and 20. And um, so when I speak, I speak as a therapist. I speak as a licensed clinical social worker, professional in the field. But I also speak as a woman who's lived life uh, on her own and also have had the privilege of working with um, um, hundreds of people over the years. Um, so... Today's topic is a little controversial. It's about sex in a marriage. It's about infidelity. Um, it's funny because I keep getting these requests to do specific topics and this one has been coming up. Uh, and so I thought I'd, I'd give my two cents for what it's worth and hopefully it brings you some um, insight um, on this topic. So let's start by defining infidelity. Infidelity is basically cheating in a marriage. So then to define Infidelity, we need to break down what is considered cheating, right? <clears throat> so um, cheating is basically stepping out of the relationship, right? So why do we cheat? Um, what is considered cheating, okay? So whether it's a relationship or whether it's a marriage, cheating is basically some one party, whether it's the husband or wife, stepping out of the sanctity of the relationship, why are we in a relationship? We're in a relationship to share our lives with someone else, right? So we basically share our day-to-day, -day, we share our feelings, we share our emotions, but we also share our bodies. We share our bodies in the way we lay and make, we make love with another person and we're intimate with another person. So cheating is basically any violation of any of those things. Um, for some, cheating is basically um, confiding in someone else, um, opening up and being, you know, uh, emotionally vulnerable with another person while for others cheating is more actually kissing being intimate physical having sex with another person um, and men and women are um, very funny in how what we consider cheating so for women it tends to be where even if their husbands or their boyfriends or their partners um, step out and confide and open up and emotionally connect with another um, person, that is considered cheating. They consider that to be a huge violation um, versus, you know, having sex. Um, and then others, men, sometimes the physical is just physical. They're not that attached to it. It's just an act. Um, they don't quite consider that. So everyone's different, but that's basically the spectrum of cheating, right? So, um, we defined cheating so why do we people why do people cheat in a relationship um well we cheat in a relationship because we're not we don't feel respected valued loved treasured heard in a relationship if we are not getting what we want in our partner we're going to look for it outside is as simple as that um if you're not getting the attention um, the care, the respect that you, that you want, that you crave. And maybe perhaps you got early in the marriage or early in the relationship, but you're not getting now, then when someone else gives you that, you're going to step out. You're going to be very tempted to um, indulge and explore that more simply because we want, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter whether you're a man or woman. It doesn't matter if you're a little boy, a girl, if you're older, a senior citizen. It doesn't matter how, what age you are. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter what color you are. Everyone has this basic human need to be seen, to be heard, to be respected, to be valued, to be cherished. Basic human need. Whether we do that in our work environment or whether we do that in our intimate relationships, whether it's in our friendships, that's the basic human need. So when we don't have that in our marriage or in our relationship, it's very easy to um, then sway when we get it outside or go looking for it outside. Um, 
in my experience of working with people, it's not just men who cheat. Women cheat just as much as men do. Um, and that's a whole different topic in terms of, you know, the lies that men, how men lie versus women lie. Someday I'll do a talk about that. Um, there's a whole science to that. But, um, so let's talk about this contract of marriage. Um, you know, every marriage is different, okay? And of course, marriage evolves and changes, right? When you get married, um, we always, we're always growing and evolving as human beings. And so when two people come together and they've been married for, or they've been in a relationship for five years, 10 years, 15 years, there's, now they have kids, now their relationship is completely changed because it's all about the kids. We also get very comfortable in a marriage, in a relationship. We start to take each other for granted. Um, we assume they're not going anywhere, right? Don't make that assumption because there's no guarantees in life. You know, no one, I'm happily divorced. I never could have imagined in a million years that I was going to end up divorced. No one goes into a relationship um, or, or marriage, especially, you know, thinking they're going to end up divorced. It's usually something that kind of builds over time and eventually, you know, they split up. But it's, 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 you know, there's no guarantees in life is what I'm saying, right? And um, so we have to, you know, be careful about how we interact with our spouses or our partners um, in a loving relationship, whether it's a marriage or whether it's just a partnership. You know, what happens is we tend to get very comfortable, like I said. Um, I think the foundation of any successful relationship or marriage is a couple of things. I think open and honest communication is very important. Um, I think respect is very important. And um, because those two things, if you have those, it builds a foundation of trust. Um, so I think open and honest communication and respecting each other and showing that in the way, you know, we interact with each other and of course, um, you know, it, it it basically um those two things are are going to it's the framework it's the foundation and the framework of your relationship um i know plenty of marriages that break because of those things uh and also then you know when you when i really think about it some more i think it's important to have common values um a shared set of values and hopefully a common similar priorities and common goals that you're working towards so they don't have to be identical obviously right and as people grow and evolve um in a relationship people grow a lot of times people grow apart um but i think the key is to keep if you have that honest open, consistent communication, um, then hopefully you can come together. And if, if you have the respect, then you can grow parallel. You don't have to be identical. That's just not going to be the case. But you can grow together and support each other and value each other and grow and support each other's um, dreams and, and goals of whatever it is a person wants to accomplish and achieve and be in their lives. Uh, but if you don't have that, that's where the crack happens in the relationship. That's where one person starts to feel like they're not heard, they're not respected, they're not valued. Um, and so they start feeling disrespected. You take me for granted um, kind of a thing. And then, you know, you're surviving, you're together you're married in name, but there's no true partnership there. There's no friendship. There's no respect. There's no love. You might share the same bed. You might even be intimate with each other, but you're going through the routine of that. Um, and so 
Now, is there a way to um, make a bad marriage better? Uh, I think there is, absolutely. Um, I think, like I said, I think the foundation is open and honest communication and respect. Now, if you don't have that, it's usually because you have had a some kind of history, some kind of misunderstanding where there's miscommunication, feelings have been hurt, something happened, something was said, and then you've just kind of lost that. My humble suggestion is to find a professional. Go to a couple's counselor. Uh, if you're in a marriage, I think a Gottman's, um, Gottman, I'm not pronouncing it right, G-O-T-T-M-A-N, Dr. Gottman, and his wife came up with this incredible approach to couples counseling, which I am trained in, but I'm not trained in enough and I don't feel comfortable. So I don't do that kind of work, um, but I highly recommend it. Uh, I know that I've explored it in my own marriage, um, in my own relationship, and it's incredible. And if I had that awareness, um, if we knew that Gottman therapy, if we had gone to that, it might have saved our, my marriage. So if you are someone that's exploring, uh, you know, thinking of walking away from your marriage, but don't quite want to do that, but want to give it a shot, sure, do traditional marriage counseling, but also look for a therapist in your area that is a Gottman trained therapist, um, preferably a level two. Um, and, you know, I'll tell you, it's to me, it's worth paying the out of pocket money if they're not covered by insurance, um, because the work you'll do with the Gottman therapist, it's incredible. Um, so, but if you don't have a Gottman therapist, just get a therapist, right? Find, start going individually. Cause some might say, well, my, my husband or my wife doesn't want to go to a, see a therapist. They don't see anything wrong with them. Fine. At least you go see a therapist. You go start working with someone that can hopefully help you get clarity and help you sort of get, you know, get to a place of forgiveness and acceptance. And then you're coming in, whatever decision you make, then at least you've done your work and you're making a sound, rational decision versus an emotional decision, right? Um, so I think, I think marriages can survive uh, a lot of stuff. I've seen marriages survive infidelity and I've seen marriages break over the simplest of misunderstandings. What's the difference? Um... I think it's the two people. It's the, the difference is the husband and the wife. Because at the end of the day, a marriage is a contract. It's an agreement uh, between the husband, the man and the woman, or the woman and the woman and the man and the man, whatever, however you define a relationship or a marriage. Um, it's the agreement between two individuals of what's important and what, how, much, how much they prioritize or value that relationship and each other. And yes, forgiveness absolutely is important, whether you stay together or not. So if one person cheats and you find out and the other person finds out, I think get professional help. You know, meditate about it, pray about it. Yes, but get professional help. Work on forgiving because you're not forgiving. Understand how forgiveness works. Forgiveness is not about forgiving someone else's actions per se, okay? Because um, guess what? You're not God. I'm not God. The only person, the only entity that has the power and the authority to forgive is God. That's it. So why do we forgive then? What's the, why bother, right? You might ask if that's the case. Well, forgiveness is important because you're basically telling yourself not that that behavior was acceptable and it's okay that's not what forgiveness is about forgiveness is not about um validating what they did wrong forgiveness is about letting go of the past and moving on for yourself okay when you don't forgive when you sit in a state of anger, frustration, bitterness, um, what have you. You know, um, the analogy is it's like, you know, it's like you're sitting in a drum of toxic chemicals and you're holding on to this 
these toxic chemicals and you're not letting them go. And meantime, the toxic chemicals are eating you up from the inside out. But forgiveness is dumping and letting go and pouring the toxic chemicals in a safe, disposable area. And then that way you can heal and you can move on. Um, so you're forgiving for your own sake, not for, not for somebody else. But what that does is it opens you up to then, if you want to, you know, work on your relationship and move on. Um, so let me review my notes to make sure I've covered uh, and said whatever I needed to say. Um, infidelity, can a marriage survive cheating? Let's define cheating. Uh, Um, I think I've said everything I've wanted to say. Oh, I want to talk about something, open marriages. Um, I've worked with quite a few people. So what's an open marriage? An open marriage or open relationship is basically a relationship where uh, the partners are free to explore physically, emotionally, other people. It's not just between the two of them. And the different couples that come to mind um, define for themselves what's okay. So for some um, partners, husbands and wives, some uh, couples will agree that they don't mind if their partner sleeps with someone else, but they're not, com they're not okay if the partner emotionally gets connected to someone else. Uh, while other couples, it's completely okay either way uh, or one or the other. Um, I don't have any judgment per se on how other people live their marriages and live their lives. I think to each its own. That's the beauty of free will. Uh, I have my own take on karma, and you know, and the the and I've seen, I've seen these relationships and i've always been amazed at how a marriage with kids um can be an open marriage but i've seen it you know and some work and a lot of times they don't work um to be honest they don't they don't work but uh you know some work and again to each its own so um no judgment but i know it's out there and at the end of the day i think it's the husband and the wife that decide the rules it's the man and the woman. It's the two partners, whatever it is, that define the rules of that relationship and that marriage. And, you know, as long as they are okay with the rules, and ultimately, of course, you know, I believe in karma, but, you know, not my place to judge. I think then then that's between the two of them, right? What's acceptable, what not. Um, but um, there's a lot else I want to say about you know, walking away from a relationship, divorce, but I think that's, that's a whole nother topic. So anyways, I hope, um, I hope this has been helpful. Um, please feel free to comment and, um, as always, um, love and light and God bless. Take care.